With that, we turn it over to Captain Bill Reedy. a truly difficult day for all of us. Uh, many of us were standing alongside the runaway waiting to celebrate their triumphant return after a 16-day science mission. I think you could tell from the downlink that they loved what they were doing and they thought what they were doing was extremely important, pushing back those boundaries in uh, science. At 9 o'clock, we heard that they had lost data from the spacecraft and it appears that that was at about 200,000 feet, about Mach 18. The loss of data was somewhere over north central Texas. And at the planned landing time of 916, we initiated our contingency action plan called the Rescue Coordination Center and initiated a search and rescue effort. Sadly, I think from the video that's available, does not appear that there were any survivors. We have currently impounded all the data, including all the pre-flight certification of flight readiness for STS-107. And at this point, I'd have to say it's too early to speculate about the exact cause. Obviously, we're looking at all the data that we have available. Those people that have videos, those people that have still pictures, uh, we'll urge you to contact NASA so that we can coordinate those things that might be available. And to reiterate what the administrator said, those people that may find debris, do not touch it, do not move it. Contact your local authorities, have them impound it and secure the area so that our technical specialists will be able to piece together uh, the puzzle so that we can resolve what happened. Our immediate focus is on the crew, families, and we spent some time with them. The president called. I'd have to say the families are bearing up with uh, an incredible amount of dignity considering their loss. We all grieve for them. We all pray with them for the crew. But one thing came across loud and clear when visiting with them is they knew that the crew was absolutely dedicated to the mission that they were performing. And I think you could see that in the video downlink. They believed in what they were doing. And in the conversations with the crew and their families, they said that we must find what happened and fix it and move on. And we can't let their sacrifice be in vain. Today was a very stark reminder that this is a very risky endeavor, pushing back the frontiers in outer space, and after 113 flights, unfortunately, people have a tendency to look at it as something that is more or less routine. Well, I can assure you it is not. Each and every time I flew, each and every time my colleagues flew, we treated that with the respect that it deserved from a professional standpoint. And I have to say that as the one responsible for shuttle and station within the NASA, that I know that the people of NASA did everything possible preparing for this flight to make it as perfect as possible. My promise to the crew and to the crew families is that the investigation that we have just launched will find the cause, will fix it, and then we'll move on. Thank you. Again, we know you all have questions, and we will have a news briefing at 3 o'clock, and we'll give you that opportunity at that time. Thank you. We just heard uh, finally there from Lisa Malone, public affairs officer with the uh, Kennedy Space Center in, uh, at NASA. Um, space shuttle um, tires are under tremendous high pressure. Uh, they're uh, filled with uh, 
nitrogen, an inert gas, um, that might be one area where people, they will be exploring. As we've been telling you, one of the keys for those people in mission control and all of this is preservation of the data. Uh, the moment something like this happens, they, they're supposed to capture what exists on their screens, uh, gather any notes, any notes, uh, anything on paper, put it all together, box it up, and, and put it in a place where it can be ultimately viewed by those who will be leading this investigation. That, that process still continues at Mission Control in Houston. Matter of fact, we have a live picture there of Mission Control. You can see that they're still at their consoles there. Uh, long now after uh, the loss of the space shuttle Columbia. Jerry Leninger, uh, I hope you had an opportunity to hear Sean O'Keefe and Bill Reedy. Did you not? Uh, yes, I did. And, uh... Houston and track them around the world. Uh, nobody here has any illusion that you turn your back on this technology and it will kill you. Mm. And it's, uh, it's sad that we have to be reminded of that because uh, it, it has not become routine and it uh, won't be again. It won't be for a long time. I noticed this morning that the Sean O'Keefe, the administrator, referred to the establishment of a mishap investigation board, and he pointed out it would be independent from NASA. NASA has learned, because there's a much politicized agency, many people thought in its early days, to go outside and get an independent analysis of the public trusts. That's important to do that, and uh, I think NASA's recovering from the, the trust problem back in the, in the 90s. Uh, under under O'Keefe, uh, he's brought in a a, a, a wind of, 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 of integrity that uh, is, is going down through, down the corridors, headquarters, and all. As, as you mentioned earlier, you know the tile or uh, an object hitting possibly the orbiter during launch. They're going to look through every part of that mission, any uh, indication that there was some kind of problem. Uh, tire pressure sounds like a, a minor thing, but uh, perhaps not. I mean, the tires are protected obviously during re-entry, uh, and if the tire pressure's increasing, you know, uh, heat expands things. And so if that was the case, uh, possibly there was a, a problem in that critical area. Um, you know, well, you look at all the data, you look at anything slightly off, and you try to make sense of it. If those tires were heated up, they exploded, certainly that would uh, take the doors off and uh, expose the um, underbody of the shuttle, which, of course, it would be extremely vulnerable at that point. Hydraulic lines going through there, that sort of thing. That's crazy. Sitting in the basement, seeing Neil Armstrong on the moon, and days like this for, are sad for a lot of reasons, for me personally and for many Americans. But uh, I think about those days and the pride my dad had in the space program and, and what he helped contribute to it. And I think about him today and all the folks who have done that over the years. It's very sad. There is new video in of uh, the debris. Now, this video was shot by Jeff Foreman, an engineer with a degree in physics. Uh, he's out of Waco, Texas. And uh, I believe you were on the phone with us, are you not, Jeff? Yes. Well, describe for us what we were seeing here. This is the view over uh, Central Texas, as we saw it this morning. <clears throat> we picked it up as a single vehicle, and then obviously you see on the screen now it is broken up into several parts. Well, this is from another angle, if you will. Well, earlier, we had the video which showed uh, the spacecraft coming down, if you will, from upper right to left on the screen, uh, which indicates to me that uh, the person who took that video was somewhat to the north and east. The, you're in central Texas, and you were, in effect, right. looking north and slightly east, were you? Uh, right. We picked it up in our northwest. Um, I believe that other video you had is probably shot from around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We're farther south of there, and the shuttle probably came about between us. So while their view was looking south, mine is looking back toward the north. So it's a lot illuminated differently from the sunlight, and that's a different perspective altogether. Well, since this is new, Jeff Foreman, I hope that uh, the people with whom you're working there can re-rack it so we can have another look at it. And perhaps in the control room, what we can eventually do is put together the the previous best amateur photograph we have of the position somewhere in North Texas. Now, this was taken in uh, Central Texas. No, I'm sorry. This was the one taken from North Texas. This is what we've had before, amateur video taken in North Texas. I'm not going to narrate much over it. What can you say?
could see the long stream of smoke that came down. Now we're going to show you the amateur video taken in the central part of the state around Waco by Jeff Foreman and his wife, Julie. 